basically, this talk is uh, talking about Django widgets. Um, widgets is not something that you modify too often in Django. Uh, but when you modify them, normally you feel some kind of pain. Um, and that's the reason why I think some changes that are coming in the next version of Django are useful. Um, about me, uh, my name is Leonardo. And everybody calls me Leo. And basically, uh, I'm a software engineer at CodeTiger. We are a web development company. Um, um, you know, because I organize a conference that maybe you don't know about. Uh, called by Caribbean, and uh, I'm also organizer of the Python Dominican Republic chapter or user group, whatever you want. Uh, to be honest, this is my first uh, talk in English, so please be aware I'm a newbie. Treat me well, and uh, I'm certainly a Python and Django fan. Um, disclosure: I'm not talking about the present. If you uh, press pip install Django today, you won't have any of the features that we're going to be discussing now. But if you want to live on the, feature, on, the, on the future, and you want to test all the buggy stuff that comes with uh, free releases, you, ha you can already try it. So uh, go ahead and receive some errors. Um, Basically, Django widgets uh, is the way you um, interact with the HTML elements in your forms. It's something we normally take for granted. And the best way to uh, realize how it works is to, let's assume you want to build a widget. Uh, it's a pretty basic element. Basically, uh, you will do something like this now. That's the way most elements are built. That's Normally, a lot of the examples. It's really ugly, right? It doesn't feel Pythonic. Uh, but the slide is certainly uh, guilty of some of the formatting, so it's not completely uh, the code's fault. Basically, if you want to do uh, out of focus input, that feature where immediately after you load the HTML uh, page, uh, the field element uh, has action in it, and you can write down, uh, write down just like Google does. You'll have to write it like that. You can certainly identify that uh, I'm using a few uh, words that maybe you don't know. Flat attributes uh, is basically a function that takes uh, a lot of the attributes and um, display them as uh, HTML elements, uh, as HTML attributes. And you have this uh, HTML variable that is basically string. That's what I would like, uh, a widget would like. Um, I don't know, it's ugly. Uh, and that's not Pythonic. Uh, if you want to do the same for a widget, those kind of widgets where you show and hide your password, the HTML string will be something like that. It's even worse. Um, and I'm doing that on purpose, uh, because otherwise what you will have to do is have having many different uh, methods working and, ident and getting all these variables to make that happen. OK. Uh, you, can, you can see a lot of JavaScript in, the, in here. Uh, probably you can do that better with a media class that you put inside the, the uh, widget. And you will do something like create a JavaScript file that you will source, just like you do with the admin, um, with, with the admin views, where you can add a, a JavaScript file or a CSS file next to it. And that will be a little bit better. But anyway, most of the HTML will be done that way. Uh, you, you can also improve the presentation using the render to string, basically uh, loading a HTML template and passing it as you will do um, a, a normal template in a view. That's normally what most of us end doing while working with Django widgets. We try to recreate the way views work in, uh, in Django. 
the interesting thing is uh, basically uh, when you are working with a class uh, on Django widgets, I can show you plenty of code in the uh, Django source code. They're basically big classes holding, uh, concatenating strings and interpolating information with strings. It's boring, but it's ugly. And the new way of doing that is basically a widget is a view. You can consider a widget a view. And the interesting thing about it is, you, if you have used class-based views on Django, you can notice that this is the same language. You have a template name, you have an init um, method where you basically load all the attributes, information, and you have a get context. Uh, you can see that the template name is really common for Django views. And the get context, that's where things get really funny because you are interacting with something familiar. And you can see in the last few releases of Django, like a lot of things that normally were not standardized are becoming more and more uh, similar. Even if you see the implementation of channels, you see channels work pretty similar to views. You have, uh, so, so I think that is a good, um, a good perspective that Django itself is improving a lot in the consistency in the way you code all around the framework. Uh, so the context uh, that you provide on the widget, just as you do with a view, have this, these elements that has the name, the value, the attributes, and it's hidden because sometimes uh, the elements you want to display on the George HTML uh, should be hidden. And, uh, and of course, the, the old uh, template name that you know by uh, in the views. Uh, oh, I realized that my English is really bad. Um, basically, if you want to add more, more, more uh, elements, load more information, you can do it just as you do in a normal con get context uh, method in, uh, in, in a view. OK, so this is another example. And, and templates. Uh, if I wanted to do the same thing, with uh, to make an autofocus input with the new Django templates, uh, Django um, Django widgets, that would be the way I will do it. It seems a little bit more platonic. I just will have to change the template. I didn't. Ha I I won't have to modify uh, any information with Python itself, and that's what I call your know, certifying fresh widgets. Uh, I really like the way they 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 look. Uh, they they feel more. I don't know if there's a word for something that can be Django-like, but you will do something similar. To, huh? But basically, uh, you will do that with the HTML. And, and this has a few advantages. I, I, maybe I'm doing a great, um, maybe I'm, 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 think I'm placing this as something incredible, but I think that helps a lot. The other thing is, have ever, any one of you, if, if you have ever tried to do a multi-widget widget, that's crazy. For example, you have a daytime field, and you want to separate the date and the time, and you have to create it uh, as two different fields. Uh, it's really easy to do. You basically inherit from a multi-widget class, and you have two different methods. The first one is init, and what you do is you can, separate the you can separate the data in different widgets and create instances of those two widgets within that class. And you can decompress the widgets. Basically, you can transform the value that represents the field into two different values that you can pass to the other widgets when, they get, uh, when you interact with them uh, in, the, in the front end or in, in the view. Uh, as always, I think the, the basic advantage of that is the separation of data and uh, presentation that you don't have in the other classes. Uh, you can uh, do CSS styling at the component level. This maybe is not a great thing, but I really hate, and that's the reason normally people use Jinja. They hate to pass HTML attributes in the, uh, in the, model, in the Django uh, classes. Uh, that belong to data or belong to the form. So I don't think it's, it's the right place to place it. It should be on the template level. And it's easier to change by the responsible party. You want to change behavior, 
you change the class. You want to change uh, how the element or component looks like, you change the HTML template, and it makes more sense. Um, something new that comes with the widgets is what we call renders. Um, as a reason, I think, as Django 1.7, we have the possibility of using both uh, Jinja and the standard Django templates. A lot of people in the community were uh, complaining about the idea of like how much how, how, mu how much flexibility you have with Jinja, uh, and that's something uh, great. You can use any template engine you want, and the renders basically let you provide that information to your widget. If you want to create your widget with Mako, you can build your own render, and you can do that, and and that thing make things e even better. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I'm fanboying a lot about this, but it's, it's, it's great for me. Uh, I'm, do, I'm spending more time doing front-end work, and it's like uh, I don't have to do that thing where it doesn't belong. Uh, if you have, basically this is the class, and something they did is uh, they created this base render that uh, defines two uh, methods. One is get template, where you pass the template uh, uh, to the, to the render, you can you normally implement that on your own render, and you get a render method that uh, transform the template into string, uh, as you will do normally. Uh, and you have this mixing where you can select the engine, and otherwise it defaults to another uh, template engine, as you will normally do. Um, okay, uh, this is for example the implementation in Jinja. And it could be as simple as that to do for another template engine if you would like to try another one or even create a new one. Um, uh, regarding settings, you can set a standard render on the uh, settings files in the same Django uh, that will be the default for all the forms. And maybe for you, if you have worked with Django before, you have uh, something called floppy forms. A uh, floppy forms is, uh, is the way you do that right now. And it doesn't have, it has a few advantages. You can do that uh, more easily and uh, having the same inter, uh, the views interface, but it has uh, a small downside. And I think the, the downside that it has is that it only works in Django templates. And of course, uh, it depends too much on the old implementation of the widget, so AKA no longer works in the new version. Uh, and, but I think the first one is, uh, is, 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 is the best possible. I, I know people from floppy forms will be able to do upgrade, but I think it's even better if you basically use the version that Django provides, the solution that Django provides that I think is even better than floppy forms. Uh, regarding the backward compatibility, we're pretty sure uh, nobody has time for that. Uh, so um, there are a lot of uh, classes that were removed. So it means that probably you will be, uh, you will be grading to Python 1.11 and something will be throwing an error. If you, so if you create your widget, it could be a good time to start rewriting it. Uh, and considering basically this widget and a lot of mixings and renders will will work in a pretty different way, uh, and also something that we use a lot like widget format output won't be won't be available anymore. Um, oh my God! Uh, it seems like I ended the presentation. Uh, I don't know what to talk about now. Um, so if you have any question uh, about this, I, I know it's not like a big thing, but uh, I think it's, it's more what it represents. Like the, the edges where Django is not uh, consistent are finally getting fixed, and, and, and that's, these are good news, I think. Um, you, anyone have a question? I can even sing for you if you want. Uh, yeah? That's a good question, in fact. Uh, I can do a post with that, with that answer. But no, 
I'm pretty sure this, there's a lot of work doing that. In fact, if you see uh, most of the, what, what we're seeing is like, um, let me see if I can, I think I, yeah. Uh, if you can see the way, I think even if it's, it doesn't work, is in the plants if extracting things that were um, highly coupled in, in the actual Django templates implementation, so it is more general. So probably even if it's not present, I think that's the plan and that's in the roadmap. Something that I would recommend is actually seeing the next release to see how it goes, but I'm certain that that's the plan because that's what I'm seeing more and more. Things that when you do that, um, I'm hoping that the admin becomes more beatable uh, soon, but yeah, definitely I think that's the tendency even though there, there are no plans, but it's a good topic. Thank you, that's a good question. Um, so any, yeah? Is there a improvement in performance? How have you noticed no, I don't think there's improvement uh, on performance. I think the improvement is only on uh, developer happiness, to be honest. Uh, it is a matter of form and convenience. Uh, and when, is it, when do they plan to release it? Uh, well, even though uh, you, you have in the, um, in the Django releases, you can find um, you, you, can, you can find a date. The right now is in alpha, so I think probably three months from now will be available. Um, but and normally I'm a releases junkie, so uh, I think it's, it's really healthy to see what is coming and to learn it before, before, beforehand. So probably in three months we'll see in that, more of that. Um, any other question? I'm sorry, I don't know what to do with my time. Uh, Okay, thank you.